How's it going everyone? It's Charlie Morgan here and welcome to another video. So in today's video, uh, I've got one for you called Outreach Lag, uh, which is why you cannot book appointments or get clients for your agency. Um, what I plan to do in today's video is basically give you like a mental model, um, one that I've used to book thousands and thousands of discovery calls. Um, and it revolves around the idea of delayed gratification in your outreach. Now, you've probably noticed if you've watched a few of my videos on outreach at this point, that my aim is not to give you a shiny piece of copy or a fancy subject line, but it's to teach you how to think, right? It's to teach you how to manage your emotions and actually have like a proper paradigm for outreach so that you can book way more appointments. Because I promise you that like the beliefs and the, um, the paradigm and the, the mental models you use and that you understand when you do your outreach and book appointments will have like far more of an influence on, um, on the outcome than the copy. Yeah, oh my God, the, the difference is night and day. And so, yeah, I wanted to give you this mental model. Um, it's one that I've been using in my agency for pretty much since I realized it. Um, and when I, when I came to sort of the conclusion that like how this model works, I was like, shit, this is like the main thing. Like if I, <laughs> as long as I remember this, I'll always do quite well. Um, and so I kind of do quite well now. I mean, we book, you know, up to six to eight meetings a day organically. Um, and we're now hiring a sales rep um, because we can't handle all the meetings. And so I've used this model for myself. Um, I teach it to a lot of clients and they use it. And I thought I'd share it with you for free. So have a watch. And um, I'm going to hop into my row on my laptop now. And so I'll walk you through how it works um, because it's really important. So pay attention and I'll see you in my row. Take care. Okay, people. So outreach lag. What is it? How does it work? And how do we fix it? Uh, based on the, like, the title of it and the name of it, you might be able to sort of get some sort of an understanding. Um, but I really, really want you to pay close attention to this here because when I recognized this and when I realized it is one of the key pivotal moments for me when my agency went from booking like two meetings a month to like two meetings a day. Um, and now if we really want to, we can generate like eight meetings a day, right? At full scale, just with appointment booking through organic methods. And this mental model is it's just an absolute weapon of mass destruction, right? Of mass appointments, if you like. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to visualize this out for you and sort of draw it through and um, it should massively help you. So, outreach lag. So, the, the, thing to, the, thing, the main thing to understand this about this is the idea of time, right? And the recognition that the effect of outreach is delayed, right? The, the, the entire framework that this is underpinned by is delayed gratification, Okay, that's supposed to be a G, but it's way too early on a Friday morning for me to make any sense of this. <laughs> okay, so delayed gratification, right? Now, here's the biggest issue that people face when it comes to doing outreach, is they're so wired to instant gratification in their personal life that when they don't receive the same sort of dopamine feedback from an effort in business like outreach, they actually proceed to stop doing it or move on to something different or panic and stress out because it's not working immediately. If you observe your life, and if you observe your actions and the activities that you partake in, most of them will be underpinned by instant gratification. Every time you eat something that is bad for you but tastes good, you get a hit of dopamine. It's instant feedback. Every time you open Facebook, hit a dopamine. Every time you open your emails, hit a dopamine. Instant feedback. Every single thing that we do, an activity in the 21st century, not every single thing, the majority of things that we do, the majority of activities we'll partake in, basically go immediate action to reaction. And it's this, this is basically a feedback loop because you get the reaction, it makes you happy, which means that you're more likely to repeat the action over and over again. Now, the problem with this is that this, this arrow here, for most activities in your life, is literally like instantaneous. So if I open Facebook now, and I've got six messages from clients in a meeting, and then all sorts of cool things from other clients to deal with, I quite like it, it feels good then that is literally like one second action reaction feedback loop. That, that dopamine is fucking instant, right? But the problem with this is that the action to reaction time frame arrow here for outreach can, can sometimes be like three weeks, okay? And when your brain is full of these immediate action to reaction feedback loops, which literally operate on milliseconds, Right, and you've got, you know, dozens if not, fuck God knows, 50 of these in your personal life, then when, you're, when you take an action in business like this, 
and the the arrow to get to the reaction is not conducive to what you're used to, then what happens is you freak out and you panic. Because you realize that to get meetings, right, you have to do appointments. Sorry, you don't have to do appointments. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it today, but I wanted to get this video done. To get meetings, you have to do outreach, right? And we know this, right? But the, the thing is, is that when you do outreach and you don't get immediate meeting, you freak out. And the reason that you freak out and the reason that you become all irrational and make all these weird changes, which I'll explain how that works in a second, is because you're so used to taking an action and getting a result immediately. Whether it's eating shit food or putting mayonnaise on your food or something like that or listening to music. You open Spotify, you play a song and literally within five seconds you've got that dopamine, the reaction that you were looking for. And it doesn't work like that in business. Business is literally just delayed gratification. Like the synonym for business would be delayed gratification. And so if, if right now you, you're just doing this outreach and you're not booking meetings and you freak out, that's the first thing to understand, right? Is that this is, you have to understand how delayed gratification works and you've got to understand like why you're freaking out when you don't get immediate meetings. Because most of outreach, people look for these fancy scripts and the fancy pieces of copy and the fancy um, like subject lines and everything like that. But really it's just... The thing that moves the needle the most is what you believe to be possible and true and how rational you actually are in your approach. If you can master those two things, that will move the needle far more than the actual copy that you use, I promise you. But people don't want to look at those things because they don't know how to look at them and they don't understand they're actually a problem. And so the purpose of this video is to introduce this problem to you. So I want you to imagine that you send 30 emails today and this is day zero. Right, you send 30 emails today. And you know, you're feeling good about yourself because you've done some outreach and you're like, okay, we could make some steps in the right direction here. Now what happens is you get to the second day, day one, right? And well, you receive no responses. And you're like, oh, right, and you get sad and angry. And now the reason you get so this is the important thing, because this sad this sad the sadness and this anger that you experience, or this anxiety from not seeing this like result is is once again from these action reaction feedback loops that are so consistent in your life everywhere else and so this is this this emotion here this sadness this anger this anxiety that comes from when you don't see immediate results in your outreach is because of this shit in your personal life that you need to clean up really but th it's the it's the sadness and the anger that fucks everything up here so it's not nothing to do with like the, the reason you're not getting appointments up here it's not because of this specific model outreach lag, but it's because of how you feel about outreach lag. Now, outreach lag as a, as a concept basically means that the meetings, the, the, the appointments you get today are a result of the outreach you did two to three weeks ago. And it's understanding that there's a, a gap of anywhere between 10 to 30 days between sending emails and booking appointments. Now, the better you get at appointment booking, the, the shorter that gap becomes. So for our business, we can send 30 emails today and book three meetings today. But it takes a long time to get there and a lot of persistence and consistency. But for most people starting out, it's going to take a long time. Okay, so here's how this works, right? And this is, this is I'm going to draw this out. And if this resonates with you, then boy, oh boy, you need to pay attention. So you send 30 emails on day zero. On day one, you get zero responses. And this, this freaks you out and stresses you out. And you start getting angry. But you remember what your mentor told you and you stay consistent. And on day one, again, you, you send another 30 emails. Good for you, right? But you send them, but this time when you send them, you're kind of sad and you're also a bit angry. And so what you do is out of this sadness and this anger manifests an irrational action to make a slight variation or change that you think would actually improve the system. And so you, you make some sort of edit or tweak to your copy. It's not significant, but it's a small change, okay? And so what happens is, you know, you get to day two and you still receive no responses. Now, at this point, you're, you're, you're fuming, right? You're really angry and things aren't going well for you right now and you're stressing out because, fuck, I've done all this work, I've spent hours sending these emails and all this stuff starts to happen. And now what happens out of day two is, and this, this might not be manifest itself this quickly, but you start, you start making excuses. You're like, oh, my niche is shit or uh, my mentor's rubbish or, you know, oh, I, I knew email wouldn't work. And like what happens with this is, you enter, before you start doing outreach, you have got an idea as to how you think it's going to work for you. 
And what you start to do is if you, if you start doing outreach thinking that it's not going to work and you don't see results within two days, then what's going to happen is you'll start, you're going to start telling yourself that you knew you were right and reconfirming this negative, faulty, irrational belief that basically feeds on, on itself. And so if you, if you start at day zero and like, you know, in your mind up here, you know, you're like happy, but in your, in your head, you're sort of like, you're thinking, mm, this, this email thing, I don't think it's going to work that well. Well, what happens is when you get to day two and it hasn't worked that well in, in 48 hours, then, well, you're just reconfirming this negative belief, which, which just makes itself even bigger in your brain up here, which then means that you take more rational action. This is an emotional thing. And so this time you get to day three. And today you think, fuck it, I'm not going to send any emails. Instead, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do emails because email doesn't work now. <laughs> you send 60 of the damn things with no follow-ups and then you think it doesn't work. Now, I'm guilty of this. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking the piss out of anyone that does this. And there's, there's going to be varying situations where you might do it for a little longer before you make changes or become irrational. But I was, this was me, right? Three, four years ago, four years ago, actually five years ago now. This was exactly how I operated, right? And so you, you get to day three and you send zero emails because, well, you're pissed off and you knew, you knew it wasn't going to work and it hasn't worked. And so you think, why the hell should I keep doing it if it doesn't work? Now, there's all sorts of problems with that belief, we know. But instead you think, okay, well, you know what I'm going to do? Um, today, I'm actually going to send Facebook messages instead. I knew email wouldn't work, so I'm going to try this, this Facebook messaging strategy. And you send 10 Facebook messages on day three, right? Um, and you think, okay, this is the new thing. And you get this shiny object syndrome for Facebook. And you're like, I knew Facebook's going to be the thing that works for me. And I, you know, I fuck email. I, know, I knew it wouldn't work, blah, blah, blah. All this, all this crap. And then, you know, you get to day four, right? And you still have nothing, right? You've got no responses through your email, but you've completely forgotten about the emails you sent. And you've got no Facebook responses at all. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through, um, like, how not to do it here. And then how to do it here in a second, okay? Um because this is important. Um, otherwise I'll forget how not to do. So you get to day four and you're, you've still got no meetings, you've still got no replies, you've still got nothing and it's just painful and you're, you're, at this point you're just really upset and really angry. And then you think, okay, well I'll, I'll just try some more Facebook messages and you know, this time you send 15 Facebook messages and you know, and it's just, you're like, okay, still got nothing. Then what happens on day five is you get a meeting. Oh my God. Think about that. Right, you get a meeting, you get an appointment. Someone uses the Calendly event that you send out to prospects to book a call. Now, what happens here is you attribute this to what you've done yesterday. This is a very big mistake because it's extremely likely that the meeting that you've booked on day five was not the result of what you did yesterday, but instead it's more likely to be a result of what you did on day zero or day one. We well, did nothing on day one, so it'd be day two. So the problem with this is now attribution becomes a problem. And this is where you start to fill yourself with stupid ideas and irrationalities. Because you now think it's the Facebook messages that book the meeting. Now, the problem with this is that obviously it's, it's a, you might know where this meeting has come from. But if it's come from email, if you've received an email response, you, you're probably gonna think, oh yeah, I knew that Facebook thing would work. You know, and you think, okay, I got this email response from this person, but it's extremely likely that they, they emailed me because they went through my funnel that I sent them on Facebook. And you start to confirm like these, these beliefs that you thought you had, but you know, your beliefs, here's the thing, your belief should be based on the data that you pull after months and months and months of consistency, not on five days of stress, panic, and chaos. So you book a meeting on day five and you're all happy about it but you can't properly attribute it and you think it was because of what you did yesterday, because of that change you made. We become very, very emotionally attached to the small tweaks and changes that we make in our processes because we, they are, they're, our, they're a manifestation of us and we therefore get attached to them. And so when we get a result from something, we, we would prefer to believe that it's the result of the small change that we made because it's the thing we made and we want to feel good. But it might be the case that you use some copy from a mentor a while ago that booked the meeting, but you refuse to believe that because you want to delude yourself into thinking it was actually your skill set that produced the meeting, more irrationality. So, you know, on day five, you book a meeting and then it's, it's all good. And then, you know, day six rolls around and you book zero meetings because on day five, you're like, I've got a meeting. I don't need to do outreach today because I'm going to plan for this meeting. And you do, you justify not doing the work basically because you book a meeting or two. And then on, on day six, you don't do any outreach either. 
And then day seven, you think, oh, I haven't booked any meetings in the last like day. So maybe I should go back to trying this email thing again. Right. And then you send like 15 emails and then, you know, day eight rolls around and you book a meeting, but you don't know where it's come from. And, you know, it's chaos or whatever. Uh, so you do no outreach on day eight because you've got a meeting and you want to prepare for it and all this crap. And then you get to day nine and you're like, OK, you know, I'm, oh, I'm going to try making cold calls today. And that's supposed to be a phone. My God, that's not a phone, is it? You're like, OK, I'm going to try and make cold calls today. You know, and you make you make 50 cold calls and, you know, it doesn't go very well because you've never done cold calls before and you don't you stress out and you think, oh, yeah, I knew cold calling wouldn't work at the end of the day. And then, you know, you get to day 10 and you have no meetings and then you send like another you think, OK, today I'll try Instagram messages because I've, I just read a blog post on someone's podcast from three years ago that says Instagram videos work. And so I'll send five of those. And then, you know, you get to day 11, and you think, OK, well, OK, I'll keep this Instagram thing going. You send 10 of these. And then on day 12, you book a meeting and you can't attribute the meeting because you've tried so much crap when it probably could have come from the cold calls. It could have come from the emails on day one. It could have come from the emails on day seven or the face. It's, this is just fucking chaos. You see where I'm going with this, right? And what happens is agency owners and new coaches, and I, I'm, I'm not pissed off about this because I'm pissed off because this happened to me for like a whole fucking year. I went through this where I went from day one to day 365 and I probably tried 20 to 30 to 50 different strategies and variations. I tried like seven different platforms and five different fucking methods and all of this shit and you combine all these variables and you think oh my god I've tried like 300 things but the problem is you haven't tried all these things because to try something and to see if it work to see if it works requires a an understanding of consistency and outreach lag this is okay so this is this is the thing I'm going to now explain what you should do because this is what most people's outreach methods look like this isn't a method this is just chaos right it's 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 a state of fucking panic and stress and you have no idea what's going on you've got no consistency you're doing all sorts of shit you've got you know you're sending emails one day and then the next day you're making some cold calls and then the next day you're doing some facebook messages and then you take three days off because you think you've done enough work and then you get an appointment and then you know the call doesn't go very well and it came from email so you stop doing email and you try instagram messages and then you think oh you know what i just heard this voice note so i'll try this and how about i try this loom approach instead of this and then and then every two days you're topping and changing between variables or platforms or methods and no wonder it's chaos, right? How on earth are you supposed to find a predictable and proven system if you're giving everything three to four days to see if it works? Go and watch my video on regression to the mean if you want to learn more about why that's important. But here is like how we should do this. So up here we've, we've just got chaos. Just raw, unfiltered fucking chaos right what we want is order right we want a nice predictable steady consistent process now to have consistent meetings we have to consistently do outreach but not consistently do outreach of any sort consistently do outreach of one sort because if you want to build a reliable and predictable system you need data to build a system and to get data you need to take daily actions to compile enough data to make rational and educated decisions on what's best for the system to produce the outputs you desire. And so it's impossible to build systems when you're in this state up here of panic and frenzy because there's so many variables and so many things moving around that you just have no idea what the fuck's going on. And how can you possibly generate order out of chaos? So how do we do this? I'm going to draw out a 21 day time frame here for you. So here's how I would do this. So day one's over here, right? It's supposed to be a one. Day one's over here. Now, if this was me and my agency, what I would do on day one is send 30 emails. And then on day two, I'd send another 30 emails. And then on day three, I'd send another 30 emails. And then on day four, 40, shit, I'd send another 30. You see how this works? Every day, we do the same thing. Now, I don't care if I get to day four and have zero meetings. Because what I'm looking to establish here over a three-month period with one method is a proof of concept. If you want to learn how to book appointments, focus becomes very important. If you want to build a predictable and reliable system, you want to pick one method, one channel, and one approach Right. If you have all of these things moving around here, it's impossible to get focused. 
And you think, oh, I, I, I can't, I don't know, I, I can't get meetings through cold calling. I can't get meetings through cold messaging. I can't get meetings through email. No shit. It's because you're just spreading yourself so thin, right? It's kind of like learning to cook, right? If you want, let's say you want to, okay, if we, if we compare cooking to the equivalent, this is a strange extended metaphor, but okay, let's say you want to become a really good cook. Now in your agency, you want to become really good at booking appointments. Now, when it comes to cooking, if you try to learn like 10 different dishes at once and you, you think, okay, I'm going to learn all these dishes in one go and all these different recipes and all these different cultures of food in, in this really short period of time. And every day I'm going to change the recipe and constantly learn new things. Like it, it would make more sense from a cooking perspective to become an absolute master at cooking one dish, like a pasta dish or I don't know, like pizza or something. For like, okay, I want to get really good at cooking Italian food. And so all you do for a year is cook Italian food. Now, I don't think that's very healthy and I think you'd probably face some consequences there, but you see my point. You're like, okay, I want to get to cooking. I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm going to start with one dish and get really good at that dish. And then once I've got really good at that dish, and I know I've got a proven recipe that produces the output that I want, extend that over to outreach and how that works. Then I can move on to the next dish and I can learn to master another dish or another culture or another type of food. And then over time, over six or 12 months, you've got like 10 staple dishes. You know them off by heart. You know exactly how they work. You know exactly how much salt you need in each one or water or whatever that looks like. The same is true for outreach. If you want to book appointments and build a system, just get one fucking system. Start with one platform, one channel, one approach and focus on one thing to begin with because it's too difficult to learn everything at once. I'm in the position now where I can get meetings through LinkedIn Outbound. Facebook outbound, Instagram outbound, cold email quality, cold email quantity, cold calling, Facebook groups, YouTube content, and organic posting. I can also do YouTube ads, Facebook ads, VSL funnels, and some other methods as well. So I've got, I've got like a, a, a broad skill set of like 10 to 15 different methods that I can implement. And I know exactly what to do for each one to get the exact result I want. It's taken me five years of a horrific level of work and consistency to achieve that. And you want that in the next week. It's impossible, right? But I started with one. I started with cold email quality. And I got good at that. And I got enough meetings through that to then be able to move on to something else. And I mastered my pasta dish. And then I could move on to something different, right? So you pick one thing. Now, here's how outreach lag works. And I know I've sort of beaten around the bush here a little bit. Um, but outreach lag works something like this. So you, you've got your you know, day one through four. And basically my point here was just to keep sending emails every single day until you can actually establish a, a mean to see if it works or not. But I want you to think about this, right? So let's say you've got a prospect here, right? Now, the thing about outreach is that the more you touch people, like as in reach out to them, not physically touched, otherwise the context would sound awfully strange. The more you reach out to people and digitally touch them, the more conducive they are to booking a meeting with you especially with cold outreach. So when you send email number one, it's highly unlikely the person responds. And so what do we do? Well, we send email number two, follow up number two. Even then, like they're more likely to respond, but just not as much. And so we send three. At this point, they might respond. And if they don't respond, we send four. And they're more likely to respond. If they don't respond after four messages, then I just leave them. So first of all here, what you can see is before we give up on a prospect, we've got four touch points. Now I can tell you now that 70% of my positive replies through email, through messaging, and through everything else come between touches three and four. They don't respond on the first one most of the time. They don't respond on the second one most of the time. Most of the time they respond on the third and the fourth. Now understanding this explains why this model doesn't work. Because we haven't got any follow-up sequences in here. We're just like, and even if you do have follow-up sequences, they probably suck. But that's a story for another day. But like, you know, if you're going through this chaos, you're only touching each prospect once. And the rule is to touch them at least three or four times in a digital sense, of course, um, before, before they reply. Now, let's say that this prospect um, at touch point three replies to you, right? And they, they say, yep, I would like to book a call in with you. And you think, great, you're happy. You're like, yes, I knew this would work. So the problem with this is now, what we found is it takes anywhere between six to eight touch points to follow up on this person before they actually book a call. Now, depending on the way you were this, it might not be that extreme, but before I give up on a prospect, I will send them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight messages. 
hey, you want to book a call? Do you want to still talk? Hey, have you got any thoughts on booking a call? Does any of the availability work for you? Do you want to book a call this week? How are you set for a time? I know I keep bothering you, but I'm not going to give up until you book a call. Never give up, never give up. You know, you just send them these funny messages. Every, you know, every two to three days, you're just following up on them like this. And what I found is that most people book a call between number five and eight. And so the point here is that to change someone's mind or to convince them to do the thing you want them to do requires depth of persistence. It requires you to be dogged in your persistence and to keep bothering people over and over again until they book a call with you. And so what we can, what we can observe here, and this is why I call it outreach lag, right? Because what I'm saying is on day one, you send email number one, right? And on day three, you send email number two. And on day five, you send email number three. And then on day seven, you send email number four. Now, the email that you sent, like the, the prospects are more likely to respond on follow-ups three and four, which means like if you send an email on Monday, the, the positive reply is going to come on Friday or Sunday. And so we have to remember that it takes some time for people to reply to us because it takes follow-ups and persistence for them to be like, fine, I'll book a fucking call with you. And so this is the, this is the first area of lag. Right? And by, by lag, I mean basically the, the, the time over which someone responds to us is delayed because of the, the principles of psychology. And so most people, if they don't receive a response by, by day three, they'll just stop the system. And they will probably stop following up. But most people don't persist to email for. Now, here's where it gets even worse than this, right? Because at this point, you know, let's say they respond on day seven. And they're like, okay, positive reply. You've, you've got my attention and um, I'm more than happy to book a call with you, Right? Now, we know that we're going to have to go through, more, like, more likely than not, a five to eight follow-up sequence before they book. And that follow-up sequence will basically happen every two to three days. And so we've got day nine. We've got day 11. We've got day 13. We've got day 15. We've got day 17. We've got day 19. We've got day 21. And so at this point, we start our engaged prospect follow-up sequence. Follow-up one. Do you want to still book a call? Two. Do you want to still book a call? Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. And so this is the, these are the days, and these are the emails. Okay? Now, we know most people are likely to book between follow-up six and eight. And so what that means is it take from sending the first email to getting the meeting takes anywhere between 19 to 23 days. And what we can observe, understanding this now and how this works, is why this model is just terrible. Because you get to day 12, you don't know what the hell's going on, you've done no persistent follow-up, all of the replies you've got you haven't followed up on consistently because you think they've lost interest. You don't, you can't actually be anything, but this is the key, right? Is to understand that momentum is the key to all outreach and outbound attraction. And momentum is built through doing one thing over and over again and persisting with it and not introducing loads of fucking variables and building chaos, right? We want to build order. So. This is literally how this works. Like, understand that if, I, if I've done no outreach before, so today's the, what, the 3rd of December, right? If I started doing outreach today, I would not consistently book meetings until probably about the 20th of December. And so there's this gap, there's this lag, there's this delayed gratification that I am aware of and that you are now aware of as well. And so next time you start doing outreach and you start a campaign, First of all, I hate the ideas of campaigns because it indicates that there's a time at which you're not doing outreach, which is awful. But my point here is that the work you do now are the results you will reap in two to three weeks if you're a beginner. I'm at the point, as I mentioned before, where I can send an, an email and book a meeting very quickly. But if you're still starting out and you're still figuring this out, writing the copy and building everything through, this is how it works. And this is why you're not getting appointments because you're not staying on people enough. Like, are you following up with them like four times before giving up on them cold? Once they're warm, are you following up with them eight times over a two to three week period? Probably not. Most people don't have it in them, right? And if you're not doing that, then of course you're not going to book loads of meetings. And so I learned this and this came to my consciousness a long time ago and I've known it for a long time, but it happened to me recently with Imperium Agency, with our coaching business, because we got to... Basically, throughout the um, majority of October, we didn't do any outreach 
because we've been building product and we've been building infrastructure because we took on too many clients and we had to handle those. And then what happened is we got to um, early November and we didn't have any appointments on the books and we were like, okay, we need to start doing outreach. And in the first week, I think we probably booked like, we booked quite a few appointments, but it wasn't like consistent. We didn't have the calendars full. We probably booked like one appointment or two appointments a day. But then by week two, towards the end of week two, we had like four appointments a day coming in. And then by week three, we had like, like six to eight appointments a day coming in. And now we have to hire a sales rep because I can't handle them all anymore. And this is what, this is what happens. You know, we, we re- I recognize this and I was, I was talking to a business partner. And I think like the last two weeks of November were two, two of the best weeks we've had business-wise all year. And it's like, shit, how has this happened? Oh, we just did outreach consistently for like two weeks and did all of our follow-ups diligently all the time, every day for two weeks. And now we're reaping the rewards of it. So it's like a pipeline thing. Outreach is just... It's, it's just a question of consistency and momentum. It's like a snowball. The more snow you get, the more snow you get, right? It's a feedback loop. So that's everything for today's video. That's outreach lag, and that's why you're not getting appointments. If your life looks like this, then stop it, right? And look more like this instead. Pick one platform, pick one style of outreach and one method and stick with it, right? The other thing to note is that if you've bought a course for 977 Fuck, sorry guys. If you, <laughs> it's been a long week. If you've bought a course for $997 and you've been trying their methods for a long time and it's not working, stop those bloody methods because those courses just do not do anything for you. Come up with your own methods. Think critically about what your market wants. Understand your niche and message your, and build your offer and message your copy in a way that's conducive to what your niche wants to hear. Stop copying everybody else. Stop trying to look for the easy way out and spend five hours in a dark room with a paper and pen thinking about what your copy should look like and how you want to approach this. Okay, that's everything from me. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, Like I said, I'm preaching to the choir because this is exactly what happened to me before, Um, but I hope it's useful. So a couple of things to note. If you like the video, like the video. If you want more of these videos and to see them more consistently, subscribe. And if you want to add any new Um, If you want new videos or have video requests, just drop them in the comments. Um, Or by all means, if you have anything to add to this, just comment and it would be good to hear your feedback. Um, In the description, there will be two links. The first link will take you through to a funnel with me trying to sell you something for full transparency. It's quite a cool funnel. There's all sorts of testimonials on there. And the second link will take you through to a Facebook group that's free that we're trying to build um, so that we can also sell you things. Now, I'm not afraid to admit that I'm trying to sell you things because the product we have is fucking insane. It's unbelievable how effective it is. And this year, in our first year of business, I think we've taken like 10, 10 agency owners to more than multi, multi six figures, which is insane, just through the program alone in 12 months. Right? We're only just getting started. Most of our other clients are booking like five to 15 meetings a week, and they will add multiple thousands of dollars in revenue over the course of the first two to three months. It's amazing how well we do. And so I'm not afraid to try and sell that to you. So if you want to um, have a chat with us about how we could help you, use the first link. But if you want to just sit in a community where we also help you with more stuff like this, then click the second link or do both. Be good to see you. So that's everything from me and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.